what can the EU and GCC achieve together? Let's speak to Giorgio Cafiero about this. He's the CEO of Gulf State Analytics and he's an assistant professor at Georgetown University, joining us from Washington, D.C. Giorgio, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, so the EU and GCC seeking to work more closely together on conflicts in the, in the Middle East, but their views differ on some of these issues, including uh, Iran, which some countries in the region enjoy close relations with, also uh, differing views on Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Do you think that they can uh, overcome these political differences? Well, thank you for having me on. I think it's important to point out that the member states of the GCC and the EU certainly have some common ground when it comes to both the conflicts in the Middle East and also the war in Ukraine. Uh, leaders in the GCC and the EU realize that when it comes to Gaza and Lebanon, there is a lot to lose if we don't have de-escalation, big concerns about these wars further regionalizing and internationalizing. Also, when it comes to Ukraine, there's a, an agreement on the need to be in defense of Ukraine's sovereign rights and its territorial integrity. But getting to your question, there definitely are disagreements among between the GCC side and the EU side. And also within the EU, mm -hmm. the member states certainly haven't reached a consensus on these types of issues concerning international conflict. I don't think that this summit is going to bridge all of these gaps, as we know no, the GCC states have not been on board with this idea of imposing economic sanctions on Russia. And then within the EU, some of the member states have been very supportive of Israel's war in Gaza and Lebanon, while others have been extremely critical of Israel. I think this historic summit in Brussels was important from the standpoint of having these discussions. But I certainly don't think that because of this GCC-EU summit in Brussels, all of these differences are going to be right. resolved. And, and how much unity is there within the GCC about uh, the region, what the region is going through right now? The war in Gaza, for example, the conflict in Lebanon. We'll recall that some of these countries in the GCC were, in fact, on a path to normalization with Israel. Well, definitely when it comes to questions about Israeli normalization and also when it comes to perspectives on Hamas and Hezbollah, the GCC states are not all on the same page. Um, but there is an agreement among the six Gulf Arab monarchies that it's very important to de-escalate and to get ceasefires implemented as quickly as possible. All of the Gulf countries are very nervous about the implications of these conflicts in Gaza and Lebanon continuing, huge concerns about this fighting spreading to more parts of the Middle East, potentially uh, spilling into the Gulf. You know, right now, officials in all six GCC states are very, very nervous about the risk of an all out. Iran-Israel war that could engulf the Middle East at large. So where we have agreement here is that there's a need for de-escalation, dialogue and ceasefires as quickly as possible. Right. And, and uh, finally, Georgia, what do you think the, e, uh, the GCC gets out of this relationship with these EU countries? I mean, the EU has had um, a divided response, as you said yourself, a confused one, some would, would describe it even, to the war in Gaza. And this has projected an image of weakness uh, of the bloc. Do you think there are some who suggest that perhaps GCC countries are better off negotiating their place in the world with big powers like China, Russia, or even the US? It's a good question. Uh, you're absolutely right to point out that a perspective that statesmen in the GCC have had on the EU is that the bloc has not been very efficient when it comes to positioning itself strategically in the Middle East. And I think the EU is trying to change that perception. I don't think that's a perception that will change with one summit. It's part of sort of a, a longer effort here. I think where the GCC states are going to really benefit from a stronger partnership 
with the EU has more to do with investment, trade, the green transition, and also deepening cooperation in other domains such as culture, education, so on and so forth. When it comes to these big um, international crises, I think we're going to continue seeing a lot of disunity uh, within the EU because there are huge disagreements among the member states of the bloc. Giorgio, very interesting to talk to you about this. Thank you so much for your insights. Giorgio Cafiero is the CEO of Gold State Analysts, joining us there from Washington. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.